Food security is absolutely important. It's the foundation of society, and we do know there's some big challenges ahead um, around climate change and around other kind of resource constraints. It's absolutely essential that we figure out how to make the best use of all those resources, and especially looking at those challenges coming around climate. They're emerging now, and they're only going to get worse in the future. We're looking at developing genomic methods that will enable plant breeders to much more quickly deliver uh, commercial varieties to farmers that carry traits that will enable them to react more positively to climate change. The one thing that we are really proud of and excited about in terms of what we can do using science to actually make sure we can feed the world is using some of the genetic diversity that we know is in places like the Margot Ford Gene Bank, which we hold here in New Zealand. It's a global collection of all the grasses and all the genetic diversity within grass that we could harness and then bring to farmers. Ryegrass is a hugely variable species. There's a lot of genetic diversity available to us. We can access that material. We can mine it for the genetics that is going to provide those genetic improvements. We know they're in the gene bank and we just need better, more efficient ways to pull them through, make them available to farmers and something that grows well on their farm. One of the bits of research we're doing right now is looking at drought response in ryegrass. And what we're doing is comparing under a drought scenario and a rain-fed scenario to look at how those plants will actually stand up when they're faced with drought. So they're side by side in the field, um, but one's got a roof that goes back and forth over the top. So whenever it rains, roof goes on, they stay dry. And what we're already seeing after only one period of uh, drought is that a huge amount of variation amongst the ryegrass plants. Some of them continue to thrive and some of them are already turning up their toes and dying. And that reflects the amount of genetic diversity that we have for these traits. For genomic selection, it's important that we can link up the trait information, how the plant's performing in the field, with the molecular fingerprint, the DNA fingerprint. And when you bring those together, you get a model that actually allows you to then go and predict the potential of, of any of those billions of grasses to figure out which ones are most likely to perform well in a climate adaptation scenario. Nitrogen is a really important farm input, but we also know that it has some negative side effects in the environment if we get too much of it or if it's in the wrong place. We're growing over 400 different perennial ryegrass families and we've got them under different nitrogen treatments and we're basically measuring how much biomass they produce under each of those. An important part of this work is that we need to be able to do things at scale. So in this experiment we have 3,000 individual plots and that's an enormous labour expense. We've developed a technology based on LiDAR sensors. We can uh, clip that onto a rover and run that across the trial and it collects the data for us. Genomics is really helping us work at a much larger scale than we have in the past and to also work more precisely. So when we think about breeding new genetics, we're talking about billions of plants that we could be selecting among. And what we want is a fast, precise way of actually selecting which plants are gonna bring the best genetics through to farmers. It is early days, but the data that we're seeing from our research gives me a great deal of confidence that we'll be able to provide a genetic toolkit that's gonna to help growers, farmers, and the world address some of the food security concerns that we have that are coming about as a consequence of global climate change.